All right, guys, so I'm still on vacation, but obviously I'm much less sick than before. Uh, during the vacation, I had to ask for directions a lot. So um, I guess grab a blanket, turn off your lights for three true horror stories that happen while, while asking for directions or getting asked directions. Anyways, I'm sorry for the delay that's been occurring recently, but from now on, a video a day. Horror Studio One is back. Who asks an eight-year-old for directions? After reading so many of these terrifying and interesting stories, I start to think of some things that's actually happened to me. One particularly stood out in my mind, so here it goes. I remember I was probably around seven or eight years old, and it was summertime. I live in a suburban, woodsy type of neighborhood with very little crime. My dad's friends were in the garage drinking beer. So there I was, little girl with her Hannah Montana bike, riding around my driveway, playing with my dog in the front yard. A silver car has passed by far too many times, or enough times for careless and ignorant little me to notice. I continue on, and the car comes down to the street once again, when I'm at the edge of the driveway, about to head up against and repeat. It stops quickly, and the window rolls down. An elderly couple looks at me, and stranger danger is blaring in my head. Hello, sweetie. Can you give us some directions? The woman asks. I... Uh, uh, no. I say, wondering as to why anyone would ask me for directions. I knew this was inappropriate to ask someone my age. So I guess they decided to ignore my answer, and the lady asked me, Do you know where we can get to the main street? I stare at her, seriously uncomfortable and afraid to talk, but now I'm aggravated. Main street is the only way to get onto my street. It's literally the street after this one ends. Just keep going straight, I say, with a little bit of an attitude. Oh! I don't understand. Would you mind hopping in and showing us? She asked, giving me a smile. Uh, no, I said, a bit delayed, because I'm thinking why on earth she would ask me this. Sweetie, it's fine. We'll come back and drop you off. The man spoke. I stood there, in complete shock that I was being asked this. I feel someone behind me, and my dad's friend, Bob, comes up next to me. Uh, hey, can I help you guys out? He says. Yeah, we're looking for Main Street, the woman says quickly, and my dad's friend says something along the lines of, just go straight or something like that. The woman replies, okay, I understand, thank you, and they drive off, never to drive down the street again. Bob took me inside, and there I stayed for the rest of the day. I knew it was kind of creepy then, but thinking back on it now, it's really bad and scary. So, possible kidnapper elderly couple, let's not meet. Don't ask for directions. Some years back when I was 14, I went on a two-day hike in the countryside with four other girls. Although it was organized by our school, we weren't accompanied by our teachers during the day. They met up with us at night. So it was basically just us and a map. Not particularly surprisingly, on the first day we got very lost and were basically just wandering aimlessly up a small country road when a guy on a motorbike approached. We flagged him down, explained that we had no idea where we were, and asked if he could point us in the right direction. He seemed friendly, and told us that we weren't all that far from where we were trying to go. In fact, he said, if we walked up the road for a short distance, we would come to a farm and from there, 
it should become obvious which direction to go to. He laughed and, without really thinking, we followed his instructions. Sure enough, a short way up the road, we found said farm, but unlike he'd suggested, it did not make anything any clearer as to where we were, as it was essentially in the middle of nowhere. Also, the farm was kind of creepy. It appeared to be abandoned. At least there was no one, no animals, and no modern farm machinery in sight. It basically appeared to be a collection of very run-down barns. Just being there put us all on edge, but we didn't want to become silly and turn back just because the place was a bit creepy, so we carried on walking past the barns. Some of them had old military-type vehicles in them, with smiley faces drawn on them, which added to the general creepiness and weirdness of the place. Already some of the girls were saying we should just turn back, but our team leader was keen to press on, again pointing out that it would be silly to just go back because we were feeling a bit on edge. We walked past all the barns and the path ended, and we were just facing open fields. An old car with one door open and a caravan were parked nearby. Again we thought, weird. We were standing talking about what to do, maybe retrace our steps back to the road or head through the fields, when a dog suddenly started barking really loudly and wildly in the caravan. It was such a shock, and given that we were all on edge anyway, we all legged it back out of the farm and collapsed in a kind of wooded area just off the road. We were still there laughing somewhat hysterically at how we'd just been so scared by a dog barking when a truck drove up the road and parked just inside the farm area. We fell silent and watched as a load of maybe six or seven men got out, looked around, including the guy on the motorbike who had given us directions in the first place. Thankfully, they all walked into the farm in the opposite direction to us, giving us the opportunity to move as fast as we could while still being quiet in the opposite direction and make some phone calls to our teachers who came and found us. It literally happened like seven years ago, but I still think about it quite a lot now and it still, it still creeps me out sometimes. Who was the guy we asked directions from and what would have happened if we'd still been in the farm when they arrived? What's he doing now? Can you give me directions? This is my first ever post on Reddit. I've been an avid reader of Let's Not Meet and No Sleep for a while now, and have decided to share this story with you. Sorry in advance if there's any formatting or spelling errors. It was the autumn of 2011, and I was at my friend's brother's birthday 21st party. His parents had rented out a room on top of the pub with a buffet. The girls and I had already pre-planned that we were going to head into town after a few hours as it was a family-oriented party, but we felt it was polite to show our faces and make up the numbers for our friend's brother. As it approached half ten, Charlotte, my friend, and I gave our goodbyes and began the twenty-minute walk into the town center. The bar we were going to began to charge at 11pm, so we wanted to save on entry fees. The other girls would meet us there later on. The road to town from the party venue is a one long straight road, passing lots of houses, a college, and a large supermarket. We decided it would be pretty safe as we've walked this route many times before. About 10 minutes into our walk, a car pulled up. As we were walking on the right side of the road, the car pulled up facing us. In the UK, the cars are right hand drives, so there was a seat in between us and him. Plus, it was pretty dark, so we really couldn't see the man inside the car as he wound down the window. He spoke in a thick Indian accent and asked for directions to the nearest petrol station. It would have been complicated to explain them, so Charlotte directed him to the taxi office two minutes away as they would be able to give him better directions than us. We carried on with our journey into town, speeding up as it was getting cold. 
We carried on walking and chatting about stuff for a while, when we noticed the same car was pulled over onto the curb, just in sight in front of us again. Charlotte thought this was quite weird, but it was a busy road with no suitable place to cross, so we carried on walking. As we tried to pass the car, the man inside called out that he was lost. I went over to the road thinking that maybe there was a language barrier and he didn't understand our directions to the taxi office. He opened the door slightly and I began to explain them again more slowly. I could see his face a bit more clearly now. He was an Indian man, about 45 to 50 years old with glasses. The man gave really intense eye contact as I gave directions, he gave no response and he began to make me feel very uncomfortable. I asked if he understood me and gave directions again. When I finally finished giving directions, he just carried on staring at me. Charlotte had been standing at my side the whole time when she suddenly shouted, Why are you in the passenger seat? Oh my god, he's got his dick out! I looked down and noticed that yes, he was fapping away and just staring at me. Charlotte grabbed my arm and we began to run down the street. Neither of us had noticed straight away that he was in the passenger seat, and we were really creeped out that he must have selected us the first time he asked for directions, and then drove back and waited for us. Car wanker.